Well, good evening, church family. My name is David Thompson, and I'm our youth pastor here at Rehoboth Baptist Church. And, you know, we thought that it would serve our church well in these strange times to not only give people the opportunity to tune in for our Sunday morning worship service, but also to give people the opportunity to tune in to a Sunday evening devotional. So that is what you are tuning in for now. For our first Sunday evening devotional, we actually want to look at a sermon that was preached about a hundred years ago during times very similar to our own. There was a pastor during that time named Francis Grimke, and he preached a sermon in 1918, kind of at the end of the, the Spanish flu epidemic. And similar to our day, churches had closed, schools had closed, theaters had closed, restaurants had closed. And after weeks of all those things being closed, his church opened again, and he preached this sermon for the first time they were gathered after weeks. And in this sermon, Grimke is basically asking the question, what is it that God was seeking and is seeking to teach us through this time? What are the lessons that he wants us to learn? What are the things that he wants to do in our lives? And the sermon is basically his considerations of those questions. And I'm not going to survey the entire sermon, but there are a few points that he makes in his sermon that I think are worthwhile for us to look at that will serve us well. The first point that I'd like to look at is actually the way that Grimke ends his sermon. And he ends it in a really powerful way that I actually want to give him the opportunity to say this instead of me simply trying to summarize it. He has a word specifically for Christians, and I want to read this to you. This is what he says at the end of his sermon. He says, There is only one other thought that has come to me in connection with this epidemic. It is of the blessedness of religion, of the sense of security, which a true living, working faith in the Lord Jesus Christ gives one in the midst of life's perils. I felt, as doubtless you all felt, who were Christians, the blessedness of a firm grip upon Jesus Christ, the blessedness of realizing, of a realizing sense of being anchored in God and in His precious promises. While the plague was raging, while thousands were dying, what a comfort it was to feel that we were in the hands of a loving Father who was looking out for us, who had given us the great assurance that all things should work together for our good. And therefore, that come what would, whether we were smitten with the epidemic or not, or whether being smitten, we survived or perished, We knew it would be well with us and that there was no reason to be alarmed. Even if death came, we knew it was all right. The apostle says, It is gain for me to die. Death has no terrors for him. He says, The hour of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of glory which the Lord the righteous judge shall give at that day. And not to me only, but to all of them that love His appearing. And it was the same apostle who flung in the face of death the defiance, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what we see in this quote from Grimke is that he's calling us to reflect on the promises and the character of God, and to see that the character and the promises of God are a sure and a steadfast anchor for our souls during times like these, to see that God has made His promises and He will keep those promises. He's promised to us that if He did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also with Him graciously give us all things? He's promised to us that He'll work all things together for the good of those who love Him. He's also told us that to live is Christ and to die is gain. So we have these promises from God that are a sure and a steadfast anchor for our souls during strange times, and we are indeed in one of those times. So that is one point that Grimke makes in his sermon to encourage believers to rest on their rock, the promises and character of God that's expressed in Jesus Christ. 
Also, another thing that Grimke points out in his sermon is that at the same time, God often uses seasons like this to refine His people, to refine His church. It, it makes us think of in 1 Peter 1, when Peter says, Though now for a little while, if necessary, you were grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith which is more precious than gold, though it is refined by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so we see in the same way that gold is refined through fire, that we as God's people are refined through trial. And in many ways, that's what God does during seasons like this. I think for many of us, a season like this, it causes us to reflect on our own faith and to see where are the places in my life where the character and promises of God I experience as a sure and a steadfast anchor for my soul? Where are the places where I find the comfort from these sure and steady promises that I am meant to find? And then where are the places in my life where I struggle to find the comfort that is due? in light of God's sure and steady promises. I think it causes us to reflect, and as we reflect, God does what He often does in His people. He refines us, and He refines us through fire and refines us through trial. So Grimke makes this a big point in his sermon as well. A second point that Grimke makes that I think is worth us looking at is the point that at the same time, the Lord often uses trials like this in the lives of His people to make them more like Christ, to strengthen their faith. You know, we can't help but think about 1 Peter. And in 1 Peter 1, Peter talks about how in the same way that gold is refined by passing through fire, what God often does with His people is He passes His people through trials that they might be refined. And previously, we see Grimke talking about how the promises and character of God are a sure and a steadfast anchor for our souls. And what a trial does is it often reveals to us in what ways am I experiencing that the way that I should? And in what ways is my faith maybe fragile or feeble? And am I not experiencing the sure and steadfast anchor that I am meant to experience in light of God's promises and character? And so this is what God often does in a trial is He shows us the, the places in our lives where we need to grow. And He shows us the places in our lives where we need to turn to Him and ask Him to work in our lives. And this is often what happens in a trial. And Grimke saw this in his own day, and we see this in our day as well. A third point that Grimke makes, he spends a lot of time making this point, is that times like these, so for Grimke, the Spanish flu, it it cuts the legs out underneath racism. And he basically makes the point that God is proving and showing by natural law something that He's already shown in His Word. He's already shown in His Word that we're all made in the image of God. He's already shown in His Word in Acts 17 that God made from one man every nation of mankind. God's also shown in His Word that if you're a Christian, that means that you are in Christ. So the primary identification marker for who you are. The primary thing that defines your identity is the fact that you are in Christ. It's not your race. It's not your gender. And so Grimke makes this argument that God is reinforcing through an epidemic that does not play favorites and does not discriminate. He's reinforcing through an epidemic what he's already proven in his word So this is what Grimke said about the Spanish flu. I think it very much applies to our own day in regards to the coronavirus. A fourth point that Grimke makes that I'd like for us to look at is a a point that he particularly makes for those who were listening to his sermon who were not Christians. And he, he basically argues what Ecclesiastes 3 argues, that God has placed in all of our hearts the hole or the gap of eternity. And we feel the weight of eternity in our hearts But we don't like to think about eternity. We don't like to consider the bigger questions in life. And Grimke pushes his audience and he says, use this as an opportunity to consider the bigger questions in life. God has placed eternity in your heart. Do not stuff it during this trial. Instead, consider it. 
And again, as I said, he particularly pushes that to those who do not know Christ by arguing that today is the day of salvation for you. So those are four points from Grimke's sermon that I think are, are really worth our consideration today. There are many more points that he makes in his sermon, and you're welcome to read his sermon in whole if you would like to. If you would like a copy of his sermon, feel free to email me. You can email me at David Thompson at Rehoboth.org. Again, that's David Thompson at Rehoboth.org. You should see my email on the screen as well. But if you'd like a copy of it, I'm happy to email it to you. So just send me an email and I will send that your way. So that being said, we ask too that you would spend some time praying through the points of Grimke's sermon that we addressed tonight. Um, In particular, we ask that you would pray three things. One, we ask that you would spend some time praying that God would refine our church, that He would refine us as His people um, individually, also that He would refine us at Rehoboth Baptist Church as a part of His body. We ask, too, that you would pray during this time that Christ would be our anchor. And we talked about Hebrews 6 earlier, so we ask that you would pray for Christians, for yourself, for our church, that Christ would dwell in our hearts by faith and that we would know God and His promises to be a sure and a steadfast anchor for our soul. So we ask that you would pray for that. And lastly, we pray, you know, we, we mention Grimke's words to the non-Christian and, and how Grimke implored the non-Christian to consider the things of eternity. We just ask that you would pray for those who do not know Christ, that they would feel the weight of eternity that is there, just like Ecclesiastes 3 tells us. We ask that you would pray for those who don't know Christ, that they would feel the weight of eternity in their hearts and that in that they would turn to Christ and know Him during this time. So we ask that you would pray those things, consider those things during this time. We hope this has been a blessing to you this Sunday evening. Um, Have a blessed rest of your Sunday evening. Thanks for tuning in.